हेलो इंटरनेट व्हाट्सअप वेलकम टू जे एस कैफे कैसे हो आप सब एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दी मेक माई ट्रिप एस डी टू फ्रंट एंड यू आई इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन तो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड So one of my friend recently gave an interview for Make My Trip SD2 UI role and in this video I will be discussing all the front end interview question that was asked. So there were actually three technical rounds. The round 1 was a DSGS round in this uh or it is also sometimes called as a, a PS round, problem solving round. So in this you will be you know asked questions on data structures and algorithms probably one or two questions and followed by some basic questions on JavaScript. The round two was a React, a uh, React JS and a JS round. So in this, you can expect questions uh, related to a uh, React JS and some again uh, questions on the Vanilla JS part as well. And the third was the system design round. In system design round, you can uh, expect uh, any problem st statement related to the front end. And if you are a SD one appearing for the interview, then probably you won't be seeing system design rounds uh, in your interviews. But uh, anyways, uh, you should always you know consider uh, system design as well, even if you are SD one, SD two, or whatsoever. Because at certain point of time, you will encounter system design in your interviews. So it's better to prepare beforehand than at the actual moment. Okay. In this video, we'll be actually discussing just the questions only, and I'll make a separate dedicated video for each of the question itself, so that uh, we can discuss about the problem in depth and we can understand, you know, e each and every side of the question. So covering every question in a single video is not possible, so I decided to split, uh, the you know sections in various videos, so that. Uh, we will be uh, will be having a proper video to discuss the questions only, and will be having each video dedicated to each problem statement. Uh, moving forward, okay. So in this video, we'll be just discussing the questions, and so that if you are you know having interview tomorrow or day uh, day after tomorrow after this video is you know uploaded on YouTube, you can probably go through the question and search for the answers on the internet itself. And meanwhile, I'll catch up. Uh, with the questions on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's start with the round one. So in the round one, the first question was the classic uh, lead code problem that was a four sum. I hope most of you guys are already aware of this four sum problem. Like uh, it starts with a two sum problem, then followed by three sum, then four sum problem, and then followed by four sum two problem. Okay, so this uh, is the link to the problem. I'll also attach in the comments uh, in the description as well. So you'll be given array of nums of n integers. Return an array of unique uh, quadruples nums a, b, c, d such that um, a, b, c, d are discrete. Uh, a, b, c, d lies within zero to n, and sum of a, b, c, d equals also target. Okay. So again, this is equivalent to the you know the uh, two sum problem as well. So if you go to similar questions, you'll find the two sum problem and the three sum then. Comes the foursome problem and then comes the foursome two problem. So I would suggest first to solve this particular twosome problem, then move to a threesome, and then moving forward you can solve the foursome problem. Okay, so solving twosome problem is the first step. Then uh, you'll uh, come to threesome problem, which will indirectly you know uh, utilize a twosome problem. Then when you uh, uh when you'll solve this three sum problem, then you will come to the four sum problem, right? So this is how it works. So this was actually the only DSA question that was asked uh in the DSGS round, and followed by that we have JS questions. So the second question was write polyfill of reduce. Okay, so we have reduce yes, and if you go ahead and see that this is. The reduce method, right? So if you are not aware what reduce method does, then you can read it from here. And then once you have the understanding what is a reduce method, then you can, you know, apply uh, this reduce method in your um, code. Okay. So you have to create a polyfill of reduce. So if you are not familiar with what is polyfill, so I'll give you an uh, definition as well. What is polyfill in JS? Right, so polyfill. So MDN says that 
polyfill is a piece of code usually javascript on the web used to provide modern functionality on the old browser that do not natively support it right so for example so you see that there are actually many operators or functions in javascript right you have concat you have every you have fill you have filter right and what not okay join keys map uh, so these kind of function let's suppose if someone is using very old browser okay very very old browser and by that time uh, assume that this particular function is not available for that particular browser right and your javascript code is internally using it somehow right so that particular browser won't understand that particular function right for example this array dot reduce is not supported by your browser then you have to create a polyfill for that particular uh, function reduce so that it is supported on that particular browser right so for example a polyfill could be a make the functionality of text shadow in i7 using proprietary i filters or mimic rem units or media queries by using javascript to dynamically adjust the styling as appropriate or better whatever else is required so this is how we actually you know uh, we define a polyfill so many a times i have seen in the interviews that interviewer asks that are you aware of polyfill uh, so and the, the one giving the interview under the, under the pressure tells that i am already aware okay so that should not happen so if you are not familiar with you should you know directly uh, speak your heart to the interviewer that hey i don't know this so that you know the interviewer can adjust his expectations from that interview okay so yeah so this was the definition of polyfill okay we have discussed what is a polyfill and trust me you will find polyfill questions in every and in every interview right front-end interviews are actually impossible without polyfill questions so coming back to the questions again so the second question was to write a polyfill of reduce the third question is explain and tell the difference between call bind and apply so call bind and apply call apply and bind in javascript you can read it from mozilla right so we have um you know apply method this is this is what the interviewer was asking right what is apply what is bind what is call right so these are all you know used to change the uh this uh, value of this uh on the function call right so this is a call by applying you can read it about them uh, on the mozilla and if so far the video has come on the channel then you can read it from there you can find the links in the description i'll keep the uh, description updated as soon as i upload more videos okay so this was the third question explain and tell the difference between call bind and apply this is also a very famous question the fourth question was write polyfill of bind again this is this becomes a follow-up question of the question number three uh, so once the interviewer asks uh, what is called by applying as a difference next he can ask you is to write the polyfill of bind okay then the fifth question is how is the keyword this different in different context right so this uh the solution to this problem is actually uh, present on the channel itself it is the question number 12 in the front end interview series on the js cafe itself right on this channel itself you can go uh to the front end interview series uh, in the playlist section and once you scroll down to the question number 12 you will find the answer to this particular question there only okay so this was the round one and this round went uh, around uh, one or one hour something right and these were the five questions that were asked uh, in the mmt round one question okay the round two again it is a react js and a js round and total six questions were asked okay so let us discuss what these questions are okay so the first question is how to fetch data from a source in js optimize using dbounce and write code as well so uh, fetching data from a source right so this means this means that uh, you'll be given an api or a json file and you have to demonstrate to the uh, interviewer that how you are going to uh, fetch the data from that particular source and use it uh, in your code okay so again uh, fetching data from a source you know it is simple like you use uh, fetch you know uh, to make api calls and uh, get the data 
and you have to optimize it using the debounce as well right so you have to add a debounce to it and you have to discuss like what should be the timeout right and these are all things that you have to keep in mind uh when you're writing the uh, solution for this particular question and you also have to write the code as well so make sure that whenever you are you know making api calls you can wrap those api calls uh, un under a custom hook and use that custom hook in in your code right so try to make your code as modular as possible as uh, you know structured as possible and to uh, pay attention on you know the nomenclature of the variables and other stuffs so this was the question number 1 okay this was i think the simple simple one kind of a you know warm up question then uh, on the question 2 uh, is what is the difference between debounce and throttle again a classic vanilla js question right so you can answer like you can pick examples right you can pick examples to explain the difference right you can take example of uh, you know window resizing and a click of a button or uh, yeah so you can pick these kind of examples to uh, you know uh, differentiate between debounce and throttle so always try to you know use examples when explaining the differences or expl explaining any uh, topic right because it actually helps you know to uh, provide a better communication between you and the interviewer right if you directly speak the definition out right so it might happen sometime that the interviewer might not understand what you are saying right for him or her the definition might be different and for you it might be a little different so that different you know actually creates a sense of you know repulsion between you and the interviewer and often you you know give the correct answer but you feel like the interviewer is not satisfied so this is the reason behind it so the interviewers are so the interviewers are actually expecting you to provide examples right so that they can you guys can communicate uh, better on that particular question so to think of an example and then provide a difference between debounce and throttle okay next question number three differentiate between use effect with a dependency and without a dependency comp component did mount component did update so this question is again a very basic question of react right so you have to differentiate uh, you know when the hooks came into the picture right so when we started using use effect so that there's a dependency area right in the very uh, in the second uh, argument right so in that dependency area you uh, sometimes you uh, keep the array as empty sometimes you pass certain elements and sometimes you leave that sec uh, se uh, second parameter blank empty right you don't pass anything so you have to differentiate like why do we exactly do this right and why what's the need and what functionality these you know these things serve like what functionality does the dependency array serve in the use effect and followed by that you can tell that okay so when the scenario is uh, of empty array this is what happens when the scenario is of you know array with certain elements then this is what happens so that if any if the value of the dependency array item changes then this function is triggered again right something like that and you can also uh take an example over here and tell the interviewer that okay okay this is the uh, variable here and let's suppose this value changes then this function will be triggered and we can write a console.log and show him like oh okay this function is triggering so it is wise to use component did mount component did update in this particular question because this is what uh, the interviewer is expecting you to uh, speak about okay he wants to know that whether you are aware like what these things internally do okay so this was the question number three on question number four uh, uh, again a basic uh, van vanilla js question that what is a closure and hoisting and you have to explain them with examples again again i think there's no need to discuss more about disclosure and hoisting right uh, you can pick up pretty good examples and explain in in front of the interviewer always take examples okay on the question number five how does react handle dom manipulation uh, you can read about reconciliation uh, on the internet and explore about it right so whenever there's a question around like how does the react handles dom manipulation 
uh the interviewer is actually asking about reconciliation okay so you have to speak the keyword reconciliation and then move forward and tell that oh okay this is done by reconciliation and this thing happens uh in this uh you know in this under this keyword this is the definition this is what happened behind the scenes and all and you can also talk about the virtual dom and other stuff like how the virtual dom is updated and other stuff as well so this was the question number five and the question number six, like how do manage multiple states in React, uh, context API, Redux, and user state? So this you have to when the interviewer asks that how to manage multiple states in React, he is actually trying to understand that have you actually used uh, context API, Redux, or user state to develop your React applications? So let's suppose you don't, you haven't used Redux up till yet. So if you mentioned that you are using context API, you have, uh, if we can use Redux, we can use use state. The next follow up question, the interviewer will ask that, okay, so tell me, uh, how do we, uh, implement things in Redux? Okay. Tell me the cycle, uh, how, how it is, how the actions are dispatched. And let's suppose you have not, you know, actually, uh, implemented these things, then these things can actually backfire right so it is wise to tell that okay i personally i have used context api and user states to manage the multiple states but apart from them there are uh, redux and other stuffs uh, as well to manage the states on the react okay so this is how we uh you know prepare our answers in the interviews and we think ahead of time before answering any uh question right so this is these are the things that you have to keep in mind the next was the system design round uh the system design was around to create a flight booking system okay so flying booking system may you are not supposed to create a whole uh you know a flight booking system in that particular uh system design round okay you are not expected to do that what you are expected to do is that you will be asked to uh you will be given a functionality okay okay so this is my requirement okay user can uh you know uh, search for the flights based on dates he can search uh, for the flights based on a destination and then you have to show the list of the flights user can select a flight and uh, book a flight okay so this is a system right you are not supposed to code anything in the system design the max that can happen in system design is that the interviewer can ask you to you know uh, uh, write the architecture of the component only like by architecture i mean that this is your component okay you, you'll be asked to utilize the component and this is my prop one okay you can tell this is this is my prop one this is my prop two and so on okay this is what the max interviewer can ask okay that okay so this year this is your component okay this is your component now what are the properties that this component is going to accept what are the properties uh what are the fallback values what are you know what how will will you optimize this component what are the error scenarios have you handled them or not right so these are all the things that you have to uh, keep in mind and often in the uh, design uh system design round you have to speak about optimizations you have to speak about uh network optimization asset optimizations right and you have to speak about design patterns as well uh and uh, you have to, sometimes if the uh you know the conversation is going too deep they may ask you that okay so will you choose ssr csr what will you choose uh, ssg isg what's the you know uh architecture you are going to use but again that too is very less uh in the interviews more often you will be judged upon how you design a component okay what are the things you think before uh, designing any component right so these are all the things and the question was uh the flight booking system so i have already told what uh you are expected to build in flight booking system user can uh filter uh fil search for the flights based on dates or based on the location like from where to where and when you click enter you, you will see a list of flights and you can book it okay so you have to uh you have to actually uh, design this okay you design the component a uh, uh, component architecture and other uh, stuffs okay so you'll be given a list of functionalities that is required and based on that functionality you have to determine what are the components that your application is going to need okay
So this was the question number one, design a flight booking system. Question number two, when to use, use callback, use memo and react.memo. So this is a kind of a question that tell me the difference between use callback, use memo and memo. Okay. So again, a basic react.js question. The third question is how will you structure a component which is recursively called again in very interesting problem. I think uh, we can have a whole dedicated video on this, but again, you can read about it on the internet. Like uh, if the function, if the component is recursively, you know, calling itself, then how you are going to structure it. It's like uh, when you have a function, okay, you name a function as a functional component as X, Y, Z, and you are entering three divs, right? And in one of the div, you are again calling the function X, Y, Z. So when what you are doing that you are in that particular div, you are always returning three divs extra. Okay. So three divs. Uh, and in the last one, let's suppose you are calling the recursive function again, then that the last div will contain again three divs. Okay. The last div of that uh, generated div will again, again contain a uh, three divs. Okay. All you need to add is that you have to have a base condition on which the recursion should stop. Okay. Either it should return a null, either it should return an empty array kind of a, you know, basic uh, recursive function only, right? Nothing. Uh, in re recursive functions, you return some values here. You are returning JSX, nothing special. Okay. So I think this was a trick question, uh, like just to trick you, to confuse you. But again, there's nothing actually in this question. So moving on to question number four, what other frameworks did you use? I think this is kind of a behavioral question to understand how much exposure you have uh, in technology, like whether you have uh, worked on Angular, whether you have worked on React, then whether have you implemented in GraphQL or not. So kind of a light discussion on that. And the fifth question was explain about your projects and your other interests you might be having. Again, a behavioral question. So total uh, three rounds and these were the questions that were asked uh, in the uh, the make my trim SD2 frontend UI interview. So let me know in the comments if you have uh, any questions, any doubts, I'll be happy to answer it. And yeah, this was all in this video. Uh, till then, take care. Goodbye. See you in the next one.